Hey everyone, this is uh, Dave and Ninette with uh, Tigner Adventures and we have stopped at this quirky little place just on our way to Dallas. So we found this petroleum museum. So as we looked into this and started checking things out, there is a lot to this and yeah. this is some place we really <laughs> wanted to kind of check things out. I think there's a lot of misnomers or what do they call that? Uh, um, things that we don't think, you know, we think one way things and... we don't know things we don't know. So we're going to check out the museum to kind of see what they have in here and kind of see how this whole oil thing came about and I guess where it's headed. So this is a pretty good sized parking lot. It does have some outside exhibits that you can walk around. It is pretty windy today so we're going to skip all that but it has two oil wells over there, or at least the looks like oil wells, but really the, there's no, they're not pumping anything, they're just uh, there for exhibits to see. Also, the oil patch exhibits, you go down that road, takes you around to all that stuff over there. We're not gonna disconnect and do that, so we're, gonna, we're not gonna go over there, but uh, we're gonna go inside and see what things are all about inside. And so they start off this whole excursion getting up to the building with li these little plaques that just tell about you know how things slowly came about uh, clear from 400 BC all the way up to the present uh, one of the ones that I think is pretty cool here is if you look at this I mean it's kind of weird how we even came about with this but anyway Henry Ford everybody knows about the automobile I was kind of wondering how they came up with gas for the automobile so he uh, started doing um, manufacturing automobiles in 1902 and oil was discovered in Iran in 1904 but they actually started producing oil and doing things with oil uh, way way before that. Clear back in 1859 was the American first commercially productive oil well. All right it is eight dollars a piece to get in and we're going to uh, check this out a little bit. They've got a lot of different little videos and portions to the museum to kind of explain the whole uh, setup here. Myth crackers. Family feud. Oh. And now let's all play Myth Crackers. The game that shows it's not what you don't know that's the problem. It's what you think you know that just ain't so. What will be the best replacement for oil and natural gas in the near future? Discuss. Okay, families, time's up, and a flip of the coin says we'll go to the Rodriguez family first. What do you say? Ethanol. Ethanol. Yeah. All right, ethanol. Let's see what the facts are. Oh, that's a myth. Sorry. Bill, tell us why. Well, Bonnie, ethanol, which is already added to our gasoline, is clean burning and reduces some exhaust emissions from cars and trucks. But it also needs lots and lots of land and lots and lots of water to grow the corn that we make ethanol from. Meanwhile, all that farm equipment is burning fuel to grow the corn. Plus, each acre of corn planted to make ethanol is an acre not used to grow corn for food. And smaller supplies of corn drive food prices up. Most of all, there just aren't enough acres. If every acre of corn that we currently grow was converted to ethanol, leaving us with no corn to eat or feed our livestock, it would still only produce 25% of the fuel we currently need for our cars and trucks. Maybe, um, wind power? Wind power! Good! Very clean! Oh, but why, Bill? First, wind power is unpredictable. You get wind energy only when what? When the wind is blowing. And wind power is still inefficient. In order to generate enough power to support just New York City, you'd need a wind farm measuring 40 miles by 40 miles. That's an area equal to half of Yellowstone National Park. So we're a long way from being able to rely on wind. So needless to say, Myth Crackers has told us that everything that we think about oil, it did not come from dinosaurs, it doesn't come from dead plants, it came from the little animals on the floor of the ocean in the area we're in, used to be ocean. And so that's why there's so much oil in this particular area. 
So it's, this is kind of neat. You know, this really does answer a lot of questions that uh, takes care of a lot of myths. The big thing is, is there's a lot of oil down there. But you have to go deeper. You have to go into the ocean. It just costs a lot of money to get it. So if we can figure out other ways to power things with electric, then yeah, we, we don't need to uh, spend so much money on getting the oil. So really cool letting us know more about this whole industry instead of just what you hear on the news. Wouldn't this be nice? Look at the price of gas here. 27.9. Apparently they've been doing that 0.9 for a long time. So it's amazing how many myths there are about oil. Newspapers and things like that, people get their own little ideas and spread rumors around. Can't believe everything you read or hear. You gotta go right to the source. No more oil. World supply will be gone in six months. When I was in high school, that was back in the 70s, we had to line up at the gas station to get gas because there was a shortage. And now look, <laughs> there's gas everywhere. She's on a seismic vibe here. It doesn't last too long. <laughs> <laughs> Not long enough for you? No, I keep pushing the button. It's almost like that. Maybe it needs more batteries. Look at the well drilling tip. It's hooked to uh, a big pipeline. Look at all the different drilling tips they have. Kind of depends on what you're going to be drilling through. So there's a bunch of different uh, tips here to determine where you're going. There's definitely a lot more to all of this than we have been uh, told or taught. I mean, a lot of time and effort goes into this whole deal just trying to figure this all out so it makes you pretty excited about the whole process have you ever considered what the world would be like without oil sure we know the streets wouldn't be as congested and many homes would need to find another solution for heat. but did you ever consider the other many items we take for granted on a daily basis that like oil are petroleum based that cup you're drinking from gone Yep, the medicine cabinet is filled with all sorts of plastic bottles, and plastic is made from petroleum. And the aspirin in your cabinet also contains benzene, and benzene has petroleum in it. Hey Susie, want to use your new makeup for your game tonight? No, can't use that. Or that. Or that. A majority of these cosmetics are made up from petrochemicals. That cute skirt has dye, polyester, and nylon in it. And they all rely on a form of petroleum. So does this, this, and this. The stove and the gas-fired barbecue. These all rely on natural gas. And without it, you'd have to turn to other options. Face it, without petroleum, the world would look much different than it does today. This is how the pump is pumping. So it's taking it out of this big hole right here and it's coming out this little pipe that goes into big tanks that the trucks take and haul away to the refineries. Cool little kids area. Kind of educate the, the kids with things, little toys and things to play with. A lot of cool things for the kids to do. This is teaching you how to recycle. You gotta put things in the right place. Wow! <laughs> teaching the kids how to recycle. There's another whole side here to this facility. Oh my goodness. Wow, it just goes and goes. Here's all the uh, cool minerals. So it's a mineral gallery. A girl's dream in here. <laughs> Ninette's favorite place. Look at this tanzanite. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. Yeah. That's my favorite. There's so many pretty. Do you think they hit? They like, go through a lot of these. Yeah. Just amazes me how anybody came up with the idea to even do this. 
a lot of smart people out there. And if we go by what we learned yesterday at the thing, it was all inspired by aliens anyway. So, but pretty interesting. Who knows how we got started or how those ideas came to mind. So one thing that the uh, museum brings out here in the uh, in that um, fact video <laughs> was that you know there's not any one source that does everything, and we need everything that's being done right now between wind power, um, oil, um, solar. The world is growing so fast, and the needs are growing so much that we need pretty much everything. So not any one thing is going to take over. So, and look at all the things that petroleum is used for, not just burning, but a lot of the stuff that we make and is all made out of petroleum. So it's not something that we're just gonna get rid of overnight for sure, if ever. So I think they've done a really good job on this museum just to kind of bring the facts out and, and uh, help teach everyone a little bit. I think sometimes we just take other people's words for things and don't really dig into this stuff ourselves. So this is definitely a quirky find. We're glad that we stopped at. Well, we got my net peeled in there. Stuffed. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I think this wheel has to get out of the way. Oh, God, my butt <laughs> won't even fit in the hole. So apparently you have to have a certain hip size to be able to drive the cars. <laughs> but I, I seen in the race we were watching on Daytona 500, the steering wheels came off. Now we know why, because <laughs> can't get into it with it on. Oh well, <laughs> okay, how do we get out now? Oh, I gotta get out, I'm gonna have a cramp. Oh. 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 <laughs> Good thing I didn't wedge in there too far. Yeah. If I would have put my whole hindy in there, it wouldn't have come out for sure. Pull steering wheel to remove. remove. <laughs> oh. There we go. Look at that. Oh, hey, now I can sit down. Well, how stupid was that? Okay. Oh, whoops. Oh, you were smart. Uh, uh. Yeah, that steering wheel can get stuck on there. Safety. We won't get it out. Well, I'm touching the pedals. <laughs> okay, so now the thing is I got to remove it and my butt that was wedged in there. See, they don't want you moving around when you're driving, <laughs> yeah. see? So... But ain't gonna move, let alone, there's no. You're gonna have to help me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here, hold that. Oh, my goodness. Let me right see now. if I. <laughs> Let me. Oh. 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 Watch uh. out with that rod. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Let's tell the first. Woo! Oh. Okay, don't want to ever be a race car driver. Okay, let's see. Let's get the crane. Lift her up. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, you got out of there. Piece of cake. Well, this was the coolest stop that we've made so far. <laughs> and uh, well it, worth it answered, the money. Yeah, it's well worth the money. We the had the price up there. The plan to spend some time. We yeah. thought this was just a... There's Road a lot side. more to this than just a 10-minute <laughs> well, stop. Well, it's a museum. We should have yeah. known it was a little more than... True. So, <laughs> anyway, this was uh, worth stopping at. $8 for seniors. Uh, seniors and 12 for adults, but it's well worth the uh, money. They have put a lot of effort and money into this exhibit. So, it was, it was a lot of fun. A lot of, a lot um, of uh, information. Yeah, a lot of learning. Cause and, and some kids stuff. A lot of fun kids stuff. It's not just like they're making up a bunch of stuff to uh, promote oil. There's a lot of good facts here. So a lot of things that you don't see or hear in the media. So you really need to stop here. This is uh, Midland, Texas. And this is a pretty cool place to see. So well worth it. So thanks for coming along. Um, hope to see you down the road somewhere. And if not, we'll see you on our next video. So you guys take care.